Good morning, ladies and gents. I'm here this morning because I want to show you where where I'm at at one of my bags that I'm making. I am gotta put my sewing machine on the zigzag. Make my zigzag a little bit bigger. Okay. I was just finishing up this morning my um well not finishing but working on um on a well, why is that not on there like it should be my 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 presser foot isn't stuck why you not get back on there presser foot oh maybe do i gotta tighten something or something i shouldn't have to tighten anything wait a minute that lets it loose that tightens it up Huh. Well, God, I got a hair in my thread. Good grief. Okay. I know. When I first get started with things in the morning, it's a real circus. Yeah. And it is in the morning. I didn't drink no coffee yet. I didn't drink anything yet. I didn't go get a bottle of water. I didn't even go in the kitchen. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm wondering how come, why is this, do I not have it? Oh, uh, Elizabeth Marie, now I see. I need to keep my little, um, jeez, I clipped my fingernails, I'll accept my thumbnail. Oh. There it is. That's my little screwdriver. I have to tighten this thingy that holds the whatchamacallit. And then we then we're going, okay? I need to like hang that from the ceiling or something. There, now then. Now then. Ah, we are cooking. Now you don't know what I was doing down there because you couldn't see. I had to get my pressure foot stuck back on the doohickey. Because whatchamacallit doesn't work unless the doohickey is screwed in there tightly. And things come unloosened after a while. So you just got to loosen them up. No big deal. Okay. Now, I'm put you down here. Because, see, this is this is what I'm still working on. But I, I have got almost all of my, um, my raggedies on here. I call these my quilt crumbs, my fabric crumbs. This is something you can do with your crumbs. So when you've got small pieces of fabric left over from whatever, and, and then I've taken my little larger pieces of small fabric, and I have cut them into little pieces to where I have got all over here. Look, there's some, this is lace. So there's some lace in there. There's some pieces of ribbon in here. There is um, just all different kinds of fabric in here. And all different, I mean, all different kinds. It's not all cotton. It's not all any one kind. It's mostly cotton, though. There's another piece of lace. This is a piece of um, sari fabric here and here. And this is some kind of a, like a jersey or something. So there's, there's different fabrics. And I, oh, and this, I don't even know what this is. It's fuzzy, and it almost feels like, well, I don't even know what it feels like. And then here's some, it's almost like a terry cloth. So everything is different. There's ribbon in here, and some of it is, is sewn on, like this piece is sewn on, like all crooked and cattywampus, and some of them I've got sewed on, um, sewn on just like right down the center of it. So, um, it, they're all, all different. This is a real pretty fabric here. When, when this here piece of fabric was not all whole, I mean, when it was whole, it was not a big piece. It was small, but I didn't, I was, what did I do with that? No, I probably wouldn't make a mass because it's just kind of like dull. When I cut it into pieces, though, it turned into something so beautiful. This is a piece of velvet. In here right there that's velvet so it's fun to look through and what all you can find oh here's a piece I got to fix right there 
because the that's where my thread ended and well anyway it's a long story but anyway yes and so I was just going to do a little bit more on this let me do I'm gonna do one row on here just because I think that might be all I need on here but see my pieces are some of them are they're all different sizes and um, this is flannel right there and um, like this is this is something I cut that was already something sewn together it must have been a piece of um, it must have been a piece of um, something oh I gotta cut that and this is another piece of that I don't know what this is either it's kind of a thick it it almost feels like a washcloth but you know you can't I don't know what that is so I won't even pretend to know and oh and then you see here I've got pieces that are just a mess you know just a mess that's no problem that's gonna go in that row too and um, so then I'll have some dark pieces and some light pieces and some bright shiny pieces and so you know I just pick up whatever so I'm going to um, I'm gonna now start this row and I push this side over you know cuz the some of them are pretty long but I give this thing a haircut too when I'm done this thing I shouldn't call it a thing it hurt its feelings but um, and then I always use my little stick I've got a little stick instead of my fingers because I have got experience in sewing my finger sorry about this mess right here yeah okay but anyway so let me get some more down in there I'm I uh, shove I shove I've showed you before how I shove the fabric up under the needle and my daughter come in here yesterday when I was sewing she goes I could not do that that would drive me totally insane well one thing if you are already insane like me then you don't have to be worried about being driven driven insane because you're already there see so I love this I love this see on this this here piece that I put on was just a little bit long so I'm going to show you what I mean by giving it a haircut so and then see here I go with another piece and, and, and it is kind of time-consuming I guess to do this if if you're not somebody like me you know this if if I have because there's my computer right there in front of me so a lot of times I'll put a movie on put a Netflix movie on or I'll just watch videos and um, and I can watch something as long as it's something that I don't have to watch real close you know some videos you have to watch real closely to make sure you don't miss anything well that's not what I, I do I'll watch something like a documentary or something so that um, so that I don't have to watch real closely but I just keep picking up another piece of, of a scrap and um, just stitch it on I'm stitching it on with a zigzag and like this one here this is like so raggedy I'm gonna fold that up I'm gonna fold it up like this and then I'm going to stuff it up underneath that um, that needle now the first one that I made you might have saw my first one well that one I gave to my daughter my daughter Jennifer now I don't know if my daughter Tommy Sue would use one but she might I don't know and so um but she has taken but like Jennifer goes she goes places and so and she has used her pocketbook that I made for her and she said she has gotten the compliments on it because it's different you know it is different it's you know I think people with a coach or a you know those fancy bags like that I don't believe that they get um, uh, a compliment so much unless it's another coach collector you know there are some that just coll collect real expensive fancy handbags 
and um, they don't mind spending thousands, and I mean they are thousands of dollars, these handbags. And um, the coaches, you know, and the, I don't know the names of all the fancy handbags. I've never had one, don't want one either. And so, um, I, and, but she said she's gotten, because she does have one, I think it's a coach, maybe it's a Gucci, no, I think it's a coach that somebody had gave her for a gift. And she said, she's, you, look at this as a piece of ribbon, see? That's just a piece of ribbon, see? So you're getting a whole bunch of different things. But she said she has never even ever had a compliment on the handbag she's carrying. So, so I thought that was pretty nice. I thought that was pretty cool, which I carried mine, my handmade handbag that, um, that my Fred Carmen made and sent to me and I I've only used it once because I've only been out once since I had it but yes I got compliments on it and so because it's different because it's so so um it's so uh, look at this one it's too long it'll have to get a haircut when I'm done um because just it's it's so different and so colorful and like I was talking well I was talking to Carmen on the phone the other day yesterday and we were talking about color and how color is sometimes just color can take somebody that's in a cra crummy mood and put them into it completely change their mood just the color itself and so um yeah and so color is good now you see i can look here and i can look on my whole on the whole entire thing here and i can see where some pieces are a little bit long like this was a little long so i'll cut that off right there cut that piece off and put that in my collection this one's a little long here cut that little bit off and this one was much long so i'll just cut that off you know and so i still got the piece there but just enough and so and then and then this one here this here one kind of pokes out a little bit there and so well for one thing i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it down the center to make it a little less wide and then i'm going to just give it a little trim to make it a little shorter put them extra pieces back in that bin of all the and see now it's a shorter and it fits this one here might be a little long so you know you go through and you just look at what you've done. And now see here, I've got to take this piece I right here. I put in a longer piece, but that must be where I had run out of bobbin thread. And then when I started, so I can go in and repair that. I'm going to repair that piece right now. I'm going to just start another, um, another amount right there. And I'll just stick in some another piece and then see I've already got that one fabric but I use the longer piece um, I'm not sure I want to use if I was to use younger longer pieces I would use do the whole thing with longer pieces but right now I'm loving the shorter pieces so now I'm going to just do here and there along that little longer piece and add, see I added that one, go a little further, and then let's see, ooh, pretty hearts. I'll put that one in there and just get it stuck in there. I just kind of wrinkle it up and some of them, if they're long enough, I don't use a stick. I just use my fingers and, oh, there's another piece of that black lace. Put a pop of black in there. That's cool. Okay, and I want to also... Now, I have had asked... I have had asked by one subscriber anyway about um, if I was going to make a kit to make these bags. And so, I said, well, uh, yeah, I'll probably do that. And so, because, you know, I... I just assume that everybody has got, um, now I'll backstitch that. I, I just always assume that everybody has 
as much junk as I have around. And But I, apparently some people are real neat mix and stuff and they don't have this much. Okay, so there I repaired that piece. So now by adding a few more just spots of fluff on there. And um, now see, when I fold this in half now, when I fold this whole thing in half, and then I take my bag. Okay, here's my bag. Um, it's two bags. I, I'll take the bag and I will um, lay it. See, that's the folded, the folded end here, which would be the bottom. And so then that bottom is going to match up with this bottom. Then you can see on the edges here on the edge here on the edge here that I got that much space and then I also have at the top I've got extra at the top so my whole back piece this piece is a little bit bigger than the bag and that is a good thing oh I want to say too someone else see because now this bag is actually going to be the liner one of the subscribers see how there's a a seam inside the bag one of my subscribers she said why don't you turn that bag inside out inside out before you put the two bags together and I said what a grand idea because when you do that when you turn it inside out then you have those seams are going to be hidden you won't see those seams you won't see those seams and um, that'll even be better. So that was a very good, good idea. And then when you look inside the bag, inside, then there is no, no um, seams. So it's a more finished look. Okay, so then what I do here with this is, now I'm going to take my bag and I'm going to, my, my cover of my bag and I'm going to fold it right in half now because the whole thing there these are all raw edges on these pieces they're all raw edges there is nothing finished unless it for some reason because I cut out cut up even clothing and things so it's so much recycled a lot of this is clothing um and you know different things and so you might find a piece that's got a little hem in it or something but that would be rare rare it's mostly raw edges so then when i sew this edge up i just make sure i get it lined up and this is the edge and i just leave it again at a um and i'm going to sew that raw edge now, if you've watched a couple of these videos, you've already heard me say all of that. But I'm putting about a half an inch seam. Okay, now on this one, I'm going to switch it over to just a straight stitch. Okay, I get my numbers going crazy. Okay, I'm going to just do a smaller straight stitch on this one because this is actually holding things together. And so now, and I won't worry about even if uh, turning my fabric away, I might a little bit, but just, um, I'm just keeping my, I have to get my stick. I don't trust my fingers here. Um, yeah, I um, don't want to sew my finger again. But I'm just keeping my seam at a half an inch. I've got a smaller stitch on here just because there won't be that much weight on this actual piece because most of the weight of what goes in the project bag will be um, held tight by the lining, which is the already ready-made part of the bag. And so I... I, um, you see, you hear different sounds of the machine 
because sometimes it's going through very lightweight fabric and sometimes it's going through a little bit of heavier weight fabric and so um now here i'm fixing to go through a little heavier weight so it'll you'll be able to hear it struggle a little bit i gotta not say anything so i don't break a needle as long as i'm real quiet the needle won't break and there we go okay back stitch a little bit and that side is sewn no it's not that side is not completely sewn it's not sewn at all why because my thread broke right at the middle and so i just went down a whole seam and it did not sew see now this is where if you really had a lot of anxiety you'd be cussing your machine but it's not your machine's fault that you ran out of thread no it's not it's your own it's your own fault nobody else's so all you have to do then is to re-thread the machine just calmly just re-thread the machine and um see if i was looking i wasn't looking if I was looking, I would have seen that it wasn't catching, you know, that I didn't have any thread in the needle. And so, um, so now I'm just going to hit, going to re-thread it. And it's got this automatic threader on here. And I think I finally got that. When I first got this machine, I thought, well, this, because the, the automatic thread, I just pulled it back out. The automatic threader was just different than what was on my other machine. And so, but then I, so I gotta be quiet when I do things so it doesn't mess up. Okay, so there it's threaded. And, um, and this one was a little different, so it took me a little bit of time to, to figure out, figure out how to do that. And so here is scene one, take two. My bobbin is almost empty, but I do believe I've got plenty enough to go through and um, complete this seam. Okay, and like I say, I'm going in about a half an inch because that is what I have it a little bit bigger, the fabric, um, than the, um, my fabric width is about an inch wider than what the bag is. So when I go in, the fabric that I put all of the fluff on. It's about, I made it about an inch wider. Now I'm going to show you too, I, oh, I mentioned that um, I was asked by a subscriber if I was gonna put up kits. Well, I did, I did. Hmm, I hope I got that good there. Um, I did, I put up uh, um, three kits is what I listed. And I listed them yesterday. What I put in was, well, I'll show you in a minute, just, just in a minute. Let me get this. I gotta stay on task here because I'm going through that thick part again. It looks like my thread is still holding up. If I get through this whole thing again and there is no seam, well, that's when I'm gonna go off the deep end. You ain't seen nothing. Okay. <laughs> and the, yeah, I ran out of bobbin halfway up. So do I start this over? Now, most would just say, oh gosh, I'll fix the bobbin and I'll start over. But no, I'm not going to do that starting over stuff. But I do have to find my bobbin box. Oh, there it is. It's not too far underneath layers. So, and then I'm just going to get another, I'm going to have to be filling bobbins real soon. And, um, but I have a bobbin winder that is amazing and I can wind bobbins like there's no tomorrow. And when I wind bobbins, then I just, um, put, I just wind them all. 
because I got this bobbin winder that winds them like uh, it's amazing and um, so so that's what I'll do is I'll just wind a bunch I gotta do that okay so here we go again scene one take three um, let's see we got halfway up before I run out of bobbin thread and so I'm gonna go now and finish the job uh-huh this is where the thumb wait a minute what am i oh good grief elizabeth marie did i tell you a story about my name oh you i get so excited i get so excited because here i am 71 years of age but i feel like a spring chicken because i was talking to my friend my friend um my friend Carmen yesterday, she's 89, and she acts like she's 29. And so I feel like a spring chicken. She goes, yeah, I'm old enough to be your mother. But, oh, you'd never know that she was aging because she is aging so gracefully. And so it was so nice to talk to her. And so maybe she doesn't want her age given. And so if, if, you, if she doesn't, just forget that I said that she's 89. I'm just, I love, I love um, older people. I love people, and people with wisdom is what I call them, because, you know, once you're of an age, you have so much wisdom, because you learned, you lived through these things. You know, there are some people, you know, even a lawyer that is just graduated and just starting a lawyer business, yeah, those people with wisdom, age, they're smarter than them lawyers. I tell you, I'm not, I'm not telling you a line of baloney. That's true stuff. But anyhow, wait a minute, I started saying something else. Back stitch that a little bit and here we go and get this one. Um, now I forgot what I started saying. I think I started saying something. Oh, about my name. Oh, my gosh. My name. My name has been Elizabeth Marie forever. And I call myself Elizabeth Marie. When I have to talk to myself, I call myself Elizabeth Marie. Because sometimes I do have to talk to myself. Because sometimes nobody's talking to me, so I just have to talk to myself. And sometimes I have to, you know, if I'm... If I'm not behaving correctly, I have to speak to myself harshly, and I call myself Elizabeth Marie. I never thought about my name being any more than Elizabeth Marie. And so, now, my daughter, Tommy Sue, now, I know I named her Tommy. I should have, well, anyway, that's a story in itself. And, um, but Tommy Sue was doing this. She, her and her daughter both did the, DNA thing, you know, so they can see where all their parts come from. And so, and they find, you know, where, of course, they're mostly Finnish, of course, but, um, but also finding out people's names and a heritage and our ancestors and stuff. Well, I never knew, I might have mentioned this to you before, but first, I never knew that my grandmother's middle name was Marie. I did not know that. And, um, but, and so when I learned that my grandmother's, because I knew her name was Jenny, but we just called her grandma. So why did I need to know her middle name? I never needed to know it. And I learned it was Marie. I was so excited to learn that, that I had her middle name. It just absolutely made my whole life. It, I was so excited to hear this. And then yesterday or the day before, my Tommy Sue sent me a message. She said, and she showed me a screenshot of what she had gotten from the ancestry, which the screenshot showed my great grandmother, her name was Brita, and my gr great grandfather's name was Henry. And so, come to find out, my great-grand, this is just amazing, my great-grandmother's middle name was Elizabeth. 
I did not know that. Her name was Brita Elizabeth. Brita. Brita, but in Finnish, it's Brita. And, um, and her middle name, Elizabeth. I did not ever know that. Well, the story is this. The story, in, in a way, it's kind of sad, but it's not sad. My mother and father met and married quite quickly. My mother being in Jersey, she was born in Jer New Jer Jersey City, New Jersey, and um, she was born in Jersey. My dad was in the Merchant Marines, so they were docked in New Jersey and um, for somewhere during the war or something, I don't know, they were, they were docked, what Merchant Marines do. And, um, and so that's when they met, and they married quite quickly. Well, my mother was from a um, very affluent, very fancy, very um, upscale, very fancy family. My father was at the other end of the spectrum. He was a farmer, just a farmer. And although farmers can be fancy too, yeah, don't get me wrong. And so, so they met and they fell in love and they got married quite quickly. And um, then he come out of the Merchant Marines and he, I guess he graduated, whatever they do when they're done. And they, he took her to upper, up to Minnesota, to the farming country of Finnish people and farms, dairy farming mainly. And so she had a big change to make. She sure did. Well, she got expecting like quite quickly, I guess those things happen. And um, so she had my brother. And then shortly after she had my brother, then she was expecting again in the family way, she was not happy. Not happy. She just had a little one. She didn't want another and this quickly. And, um, and so, um, so she, you know, she had this, this feeling of, uh, like, I just don't need this today. And so, um, so, so, well, there's a lot more to the story, but then, then my father, well, as it ended up, um, yeah, there was a lot like more to the story, but then, um, as it, as it ended up, I stayed in the family. Okay, and so now that I found out that I was named for my grandmother and my great-grandmother, I know that my father was the one that picked my name, and he chose his mother's middle name and his grandmother's middle name to make my name. And um, so I know he did. I know my mother wouldn't have done that because, uh, she, you know, somehow some daughter-in-law and mother's-in-law, they just kind of clashed. Yeah, they clashed. And so um, I feel so, oh, what is it? I don't even know what the word is to tell you how I feel that I have learned this, that I've put these pieces of the puzzle together, that I carry my grandmother's name and my great-grandmother's name. Today, I am so proud of my name. For a while, I, when I was young, I didn't know if I liked Elizabeth. Everybody called me Liz. I went through school being called Liz. My mother called me Liz. She didn't even call me Elizabeth. It was My dad called me Elizabeth. My mother didn't, but they never talked about the origin of our names or anything. My oldest brother was a junior, so he just, I guess you just, back then, automatically the first son got the father's name and called it Junior. And um, and then, and, and so, but I just had to tell you that because I am so flipping excited to know that it's just it's just got me excited like you just would not believe but anyway now i'm going to get back onto the subject here now see now i sewn the sides of this together so now i have the it opens up to the pocket inside and so now my bag i turned my bag inside out so the seams are on the outside and so, but then when I put this together now, like you're going to put a pillow in a pillowcase, we're just going to just shove that inside. And I'll put my hand inside the inside one. 
and get make and then I got my finger down here in the corner to make sure that they line up in the corner and I will stitch that corner I will put a little stitch down in this corner in the corners to hold that bag so that is pretty much finished as far as putting the bag inside of the bag now what I'll do here on the top is I am going to just this this whole thing then now will get stitched and so I'm going to just use my little clips here and I'll clip I'll clip oh first I want to make sure I have my side seams lined up and so I'll clip that side seam I always do the side seams first make sure your side seams are are um, lined up together so there's the side seam of the liner which is the original canvas bag and the can't see anything I put my glasses on so I can see and still can't see okay and we just get the and um there we go let me unclip this one and um then we'll just make sure that that's lined up nice okay and see I took that edge of the fabric because it's a little bit longer see so I flipped that under there so that that kind of makes sure that that fixes up just nice and then I just put these clips these clips are very handy I like this better than pinning because boy you pin something and you bleed you pin and you bleed well sort of and so then I'll just get my pins and my clips some of them I got these little bitty clothespins. Those are fun too. You need fun things when you sew. And so, but, um, so now I'm going to show you once I get this clipped. Well, um, I'm not going to stitch this right. Where'd that go? Okay, where'd that go? Now. I'm going to show you there now I got that all clipped all the way around so now it's ready to be sewn I'm just gonna and then that will be basically finished unless you want to do more unless you want to add more like my last one I made I put a fringe on the top this one I don't think I'll put a fringe you can also take this whole band and you can you can start putting pieces on the handles and let that be scrappy and stitch it all the way up you can do that there's many things you can do with the handles now see this one it will be left flat so if you're going to use them for um grocery bags or whatever then you know that you want them to be able to fold nice and flat just so, but this i'm calling these project bags because you know if you take a a project if you put your coloring books and crayons in here um uh, whatever you're coloring if you put your knitting in here your crocheting in here or something that you're working on um uh, doodle you're doodling whatever you know you put that in this in a project bag that way if you're going to be traveling or something you have that bag and so anyway that's what this bag is now this is i'm going to show you now the kit now this is this is the kit part of the kit this is be, between 11 and 12 ounces of um of fabrics of different scrap fabrics there's in this one it's got like um, some sorry silk in there there's some ribbon in there there's some just everything different and there's ribbon and ribbon there and it's just all different fabrics but this is a lot of fabric this is way more than you need to cover the whole thing this is way more because when I measured what I make weighed my um, my cover before I put that last row on I weighed that on the coastal scale and that whole thing weighed about nine ounces so having 12 ounces will be plenty of fabric scraps and then in your kit you'll also get the bag 
This is a 15 inch by 16 inch bag. And it's, I think they called it five ounce muscle. I'm not sure, but it's, um, it's kind of a heavy, like a muslin, 100% cotton. And it's got nice handles because the handles are also the, um, 100% cotton. They're not like a nylon thing. And they're put on very nice and strong. And they say that this bag will hold 35 pounds. So you'll get the the bag you'll get enough trim and then you'll get a piece of the muslin and the muslin will be the muslin is that's what you'll use for um for stitching your stitching your um your pieces to and so it's already that same size that i it's a little bit wider than the than the um than the bag so see, here's the bag, and then the muslin is like another inch bigger. So it's got a half an inch on each edge over each, because you, for this kit anyway, you don't cut this. This is, it, and then it's longer this way, then it's longer from bottom to top. See, so here it is at the bottom. And then at the top, you've got this extra fabric because then when you go to sew the fabric to the bag, you'll be able to turn this part down and the extra, turn that down. So don't cut that off and see. And then when you stitch it, you've got them stitched right nice together. And um, so that's what you get. And... Then I have, okay, and so that's what comes in the kit. That's what you get, these three items. Other than if I decide, which I will, I'll put in, I always put in something, um, something, a little free item, a little extra of something, and you never know what I'm going to put in there. Maybe I'll put one larger piece of fabric in with it, or, um, or and a little pair of little, um, scissors you always get a little pair of scissors just the little um little pair of detail scissors but this is what is in the kit now also i have another listing that is just the um scrap fabrics now in the listing for just the scrap fabrics that one is going to be extra. You're going to get at least, because I say this this here is going to be maybe about 11 ounces, maybe close to 12, but probably about 11. And because um, I kind of just put the bag up on the postal scale and then I just dip out of my bucket here and I fill it. And um, and then that's how much it, but the one, the kits, the, the, collection of scraps that I have listed is just the scraps and you will have 12 ounces in there I'm going to make sure there's 12 ounces of scraps in in the um in those bags which this is like a gallon size ziplock bag and so that's what I'm going to use is these kind of ziplock bags to fill with the scraps and that's what will be in that kit I'm going to be, hopefully today I'll add more to my shop, but I'm also going to add um, a collection of larger scrap fabrics. And um, I don't have them all cut yet because some of them, and then again, you may get some that are of an odd shape, but most of them will be square and of different sizes. and. Maybe the biggest ones will be like a six or seven inch square, probably a six inch square will be the largest. And then they'll be, and they'll all be sort of that much. Um, although some of the laces that I'm putting in is four inches, but then they would be four inches by about six inches too. And so, and I haven't listed them yet, so I'm not sure exactly, and I'm gonna put the amount in as far as weight. Now, I have one more thing I have to show you. This is amazing. I'm happy meal. I've had it already a couple of days. <sighs> Jennifer Travis. 
bless her heart. I opened this box and I just almost died. Can you tell what that is in there? Looks a little bit odd, doesn't it? I did put, I'm not going to put it on right now. Well, yeah, what, let me, can I put it on over this? Well, let me see. Just a second. Wait a second. Watch this. I'll take this flower out of my hair. And then look at this. Just a minute. Let me get this on. Oh, I'm taking my glasses off. Okay. Let's just watch this. Just a minute. Can, can you see me? Can you see me? This is me. I am a unicorn. It's not a figment of your imagination. I am a unicorn. See, I got horn up here. I'm having to look through my nose, so. Um, this is me. I am a unicorn. I am a happy unicorn. I am a very happy unicorn. I don't know what unicorns say. Hee-haw, 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 hee-haw. So, this is me. This is my unicorn. Thank you, Miss Jennifer. This is my first ever real unicorn. I love this. I love this. This. This is my unicorn. I love my... Well, anyway. So, anyhow. Let me see. <sighs> yes. Oh, I got to put my bow back in my hair. My, my flare. My flare back in my hair. There. All right. Let me fix my hair. There. That's my unicorn. Oh. Huh. Now. Let me see. Here... I really haven't even looked through this real closely. This is stamp favors. And there's a unicorn here. It says, you're one of a kind valentine. And so the stamps, let's see. <gasps> a unicorn. Day gummit. Day gummit. Is it? Oh, and they're pink, and they're already, that's a unicorn, and these, oh, that's so cute. If I didn't want to use them for Valentine's, I could cut Valentine off, and it says, you're one of a kind, and I could still use them for anything. Now, this one is hearts. Oh, and they're yellow, and look at there, it's, see? They're self-inking already. These are fun. Oh my gosh, how cute are these? I have to put a little dish. Oh, and these are hearts too. And they're the same. Okay, so it's unicorns and hearts. Okay, so the pink ones are unicorns and the yellow ones are hearts. Make sure I shut them tightly so that... Oh, that is neat. The whole... The whole um. The whole hearty thing that is is like felt. This is fun. Okay, I'm gonna just put them in this right for right now because I know where this is. Okay, that's fun. Those are cute. Okay, and then in here, <gasps> look at this black ink pen. I have got a collection of. Oh my gosh, this is nice. This looks like it's all hand carved. Designed in the USA. Designed in the USA, made in China. Okay. But it's it looks like it's made... Well, you can't see this. It looks like it's made out of clay. This is so cute. Let's see, it makes sure it works. If not, China's getting a note. Oops. Oh, yes, it writes. Unicorn. And um, look at this foam thing it comes in. This is foam. And in the shape of a unicorn. I got to keep that. I got to keep that. 
because I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'm going to do something with that. I'll use it for something, okay? I love that. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, my God. And then we go on here, and look at here is a plant. A character succulent. I wonder if I can keep from killing this plant. It's, oh, that goes in that. Look at it. Why am I showing you things you can't see? Isn't this cute? Look at that. That's beautiful. That is just gorgeous. I love that. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, my goodness. And then we have, oh, and I have just been, includes three markers. So there's three markers in here and a unicorn and a, and a, um, and it's on velvet. Oh, and this is a yellow coin. Oh, a unicorn and he's got his, um, his costume is a skeleton. Isn't that cute? And so I've been coloring lately. Late last three or four days, I have been just sitting on my back porch and I've been coloring. And just, I go through spells of coloring. And then here is a napkin with unicorns. Unicorn napkin. This is a unicorn collection. And, oh, oh, these are rub-on transfers from Paper Crafts at Crafters Square. Rub-on transfers. Oh, are they pretty, too. Look how pretty they are. There's unicorns. And then look at this, look at this, um, like a stork. That is pretty. These storks are going to be used, oh, and a swan. That's on my cards I'm making for my pregnant children in my family. Oh, these are so cute. Fish, flowers. You know what I might do is I might make a copy of this before I use the rub-ons. Then after I use the rub-ons, I still have the images I can fussy cut. That is amazing. And I also, oh, a card. Hi, Lizzie. Hope you're, hope you guys, oh, good grief, I can't even read. You guys are doing well. Box of goodies, some from Lala, some from me. Oh, so this is from Lala and... Jennifer. Jennifer and Lala are good friends, and so some are. This one I know is from um, from Jennifer because when she had come to my house with Lala, and she was wearing one of these masks, and I liked how it fit, and I liked how it was made, and um, she was telling me about it. She goes, I'll send you one, and so she did, and so this is nice. It's got, it's a nice how the inside is a soft something this is this is nice thank you jennifer this i love that and i'm going to be wearing masks for the rest of my life because well i'm gonna go get this nose taken care of and once i get the nose taken care of um i don't know if my nose will be fit to go out in public so i'm going to have the most beautiful masks now this is all cigar um like catalogs um i do a cigar journal and this is really oh lori must get the cigar catalogs in her mail oh look she never even opened this one up i guess she's not into making <laughs> buying cigars but um see how how fun this is going to be so many images that I can cut out. Oh, look at these. Look at that. So many images that I'll be able to cut out for my cigar journal. Is my I call it my smoking hot journal. I put it smoking hot because I also already ha also have some old cigar um I'm just I just love cigar boxes. That's what I love is cigar boxes. And I've got quite a few cigar boxes that I use for, um, use for different, oh gosh, I've got that cigar box right there. I know I got that one. But, um, oh, 
you can get this whole box for $92.95. Holy smack of Janolis. This is 106. Oh, huh. Well, I think you gotta be like rich to be able to to um, smoke cigars. Hundred and twenty-two ninety-five. Holy! Oh, here's the cheap ones back here. Thirty-eight ninety-five. Factory throwouts. Oh my! I can get a sampler. Look at these images, though. The cigars. Eighty-nine ninety-five for the sampler. Oh my God, I would, that would be fun just to not have the cigars, just the, the cigar, um, the wrapper things, the things that go around it, whatever, cigar rings. Those are funny. What is this? No, is that for one? Oh, a five pack. You can get five packs of five cigars for $30. Down here for forty dollars, you can get a five pack. Five cigars for forty dollars. Yeah, let's take up cigar smoking. We can afford it. I love the rings, though. The cigar bands, I guess you call them. They're just the cigar bands are amazing. That's I've got a few of them because somebody sent me some, and so I do have a few. But they're beaut. Okay, we're not going to go through this whole thing. But look at all the cigar packages. I mean, not cigar packages. Cigar catalogs. Look at the pipes. I think pipes are almost a work of art, too. Oh, look, you can buy... Oh. Well, anyway, that must be tobacco. Virginia Spice, Louisiana Red, Caramel Apple Pie, that doesn't look like a caramel apple pie to me. Oh, what is this? Oh, this is... Oh, that's pipe tobacco. Oh, pipe tobacco. That's what that is. Bull run. Oh, here we got some coupons here. We can get them cheaper. Oh, there's a special light. Well, anyway, that's, that's what I wanted to show you. So, anyhow, I think I got told to you everything I wanted to tell you and showed you my happy mail. Thank you, Jennifer and Lori. Thank you so much. This is amazing. I love this. This is the most fun collection ever as, as far as fun goes. I have had so many f collections that have been awesome. But this one with that unicorn mask, you really kind of topped the mountain when it comes to and, and I wonder if I want to put that mask on my, um, on my, I'm thinking I might want to put that mask up on my, um, I don't think you can, well, there's a red hat on top of it right now, but that is actually a, that thing where you see that red hat thing, that's actually a mannequin there, or what do you call it, a dress form? I might put, um, the, I might put my unicorn head on the top of that. Uh-huh, yeah. I think I might, yeah. I'll be glad to get this off of here. But anyway, I still don't have the results from the pathologist yet. I should get them sometime this week, the results, and then they'll decide, whack the whole nose out. But I got masks. Doesn't bother me none. Masks, or like I said before, you know those glasses you can buy at the Halloween store and they got like a nose already attached? Makes you look like Groucho Marx. Yeah, I mean, I wear one of them. Sure. Okay, I'm going to turn you all, y'all, I'm going to turn you all loose now. But first I'm going to read, we're going to read from Louise Hay today. And we're going to, um, I'm going to open, ow, oh, God, that arthritis in my thumb sometimes okay this I opened it up here and up here in the header it says home income infinite power inner oh, no I'm gonna do home because that's what I opened it for 
If you want to move from where you are, thank your present home for being there for you. Appreciate it. Don't say, oh, I hate this place, because then you aren't going to find something you really love. Love where, you're, uh, where you are so you can open yourself to a wonderful new place. That wouldn't be me. I've been here for almost 47 years, and I'm going nowhere. Okay, my home is a peaceful haven. Look at your home. Is it a place where you really want to live? Is it comfortable and joyous? Or is it cramped and dirty and always messy? If you don't feel good about it, you are never going to enjoy it. Your home is a reflection of you. What state is it in? Clean out your closets and your refrigerator. Take all the stuff in the closets that you haven't worn in a period of time and sell it. Give it away or burn it. Get rid of it so that you can make room for the new. As, as you say, let it go. As you let it go, say, I'm cleaning out the closets of my mind. Do the same with your refrigerator. Clean out all the foods and scraps that have been there for a while. People who have very cluttered closets and cluttered refrigerators have cluttered minds. Make your home a wonderful place to live in. Okay, that one, there is some good, there is a good moral to the story here. That is good. But the actual words for me, now yes, you do clean your refrigerator out and throw things away that have been there since Thanksgiving. I do understand. And if they've been there two years past the freshness date, then yeah, you probably should throw those things away. And um, I don't know about the cluttered mind. My mind is cluttered. But I, and my house is cluttered, but my house is cluttered with craft supplies. My, my, um, closets are cluttered. There's a lot more in there that needs to be, but I won't throw any away. I won't burn it. I'll take it down and I will take the scissors to it and come up with pieces of fabric to recycle. So this is one thing that I don't disagree with Louise Hay. I don't disagree at all with Louise Hay, but you want your home to be a peaceful haven, and mine is a peaceful haven, even though it is cluttered, because the clutter around me actually makes me happy. So this one here, I think I would take this and kind of dissect this little reading a little bit, but never don't ever say I hate this place because when you aren't gonna, because then you're not gonna find something you really love. So you don't don't hate anything. There's some places maybe you're not comfortable in. If I lived in a little tuna fish can, I would not be comfortable in there because I um, wouldn't have a place to put my things and I'd have to get a bigger place. But yeah, um, Make your home a peaceful haven, whatever you have to do to your home. And um, and always remember, too, that it is your home. You're not, you're not there to um, show it off or you're not there. Now, some people live in the very least of a small little travel trailer or something, and they don't have much space in there. And maybe they don't invite people over because they don't, you know, because because it's so small and cluttered because you know or something like that um everybody feels differently i'm sure but um but love where you are love yourself love where you are love your home if it's not exactly what you need you don't have to unlove it you don't have to hate it you just you just might have to move well i ain't moving though i ain't moving i just i'm i'm here for life Sometimes I have to get rid of some of my supplies or some of my things just because I'm running out of space and there's no pathway to get to the bathroom, but yeah. So anyway, love where you are, love who you are, and um, come back to the next video. I will be watching for you. I'll be looking. I'll be looking in that little camera right in that spot there. Because if I really squint my eyes, I can see every one of you. God bless you all. May he watch over you every step you take, every move you make, and please come back to the next video. Love you. Bless you. Be safe. And tell me where my mouse is. There it is. There it is. Ooh, oh, 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 my mouse. Oh.